Welcome everyone to the session Decibels and Drop Packets Testing Audio Resilience in Video Conferencing Apps by Mili Jain. Uh, we are glad Mili can join us today. So without further delay, over to you, Mili. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Today, I'll be talking about my experience report where I tested audio resilience in various video conferencing applications. And the name of this experience report is Decibels and Drop Packets. Uh, so a bit about me. Uh, I'm a 12th grade student at Dhirubhai Ambani International School, currently doing IB. And I'm interested in computer science, information systems, and engineering, which I'll be studying further at university. Um, so uh, uh, I'll start off with the introduction and background about my experience report, then the experimental setup I did, the data analysis, the explanation, and finally the conclusion. Uh, so the audio quality of video conferencing applications significantly impacts communication. And a lot of us often focus on how the video looks, but audio is also a very important thing because during uh, while we are communicating on audio conferencing applications, uh, if we if we uh, if we experience significant like dropouts, it becomes a very uh, unpleasurable experience. And that's why this experience report delves into the systematic evaluation of audio quality across four popular video conferencing applications, which I'm sure all of us must have used. Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, Skype, and Zoom, which we're using right now, and our varied different levels of network packet loss. I've simulated these different levels to analyze how it affects um, their, uh, the experience of audio quality. So why, what, what interested me to um, analyze this? So um, in the recent years, the use of audio conferencing applications has grown significantly due to the need of remote communication. I'm sure all, all of us must have worked from home during 2020 to 2022, uh, during COVID-19. And we all must have used Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, and Skype, which became essential for both professional and personal use. And I myself noticed that each of these applications had different levels of audio quality. Some were crystal clear, while others had um, other had delays. And this led me to question what exactly influenced audio quality in these applications. And that's why my research question for my experience report is how is the perceived audio quality impacted across four different conferencing applications as packet losses vary? So a little bit about the issue itself. Uh, high or high quality audio is crucial for effective communication, and this topic also falls under the broader field of human computer interaction, which is a specialization of computer science that I'm really passionate about. Uh, upon research, I found that factors like network bandwidth, packet loss, and compression algorithms play a very significant role in audio quality. Um, so network bandwidth, for example, determines how much data can be transmitted uh, directly impacting the quality. Packet loss is when the packets of data is lost during transmission and they don't reach their destination, which is another factor that can cause disruptions in audio. And compression algorithms are uh, the algorithms that reduce the size of audio quality, audio files, and the way they do this can also affect the quality. So a well-optimized compression algorithm can maintain good audio fidelity, even with significant size reduction, which I'll, I'll further analyze. So how exactly did I carry out my experiment? Um, to systematically analyze audio quality, I tested for conferencing applications, and I controlled key variables like network bandwidth and audio file type uh, because uh, to ensure that these wouldn't impact the dependent variable. I isolated packet loss as the primary factor or the independent variable. And I used two MacBook Pro laptops equipped with a virtual device driver called Black Hole to ensure audio routing between these applications without any additional hardware. So this is, these are a few screenshots of, of the methodology. To simulate packet loss, I used this on my Mac, uh, which allowed me to choose different uh, percentages of packet loss, like 30% loss, 20% loss, or 40% loss. Uh, then on both of my devices, for example, on Microsoft Teams, I joined the same call using both the laptops. And on the sending end, the uh, speaker was set to my MacBook Pro speakers, as you can see, and the microphone was set to the virtual device driver black hole. And then on the receiving end, um, I clicked on multi-output device and 
um the microphone was macbook pro microphone and we can see that the the multi output device was set using this where i uh, controlled the sample rate at 16 kilohertz uh the data collection process was using a a, a standardized metric called PESQ, which is perceptual evaluation of speech quality. And uh, I took, I measured the mean opinion score of the audio quality from one to five, with five being the best and one being the worst. Each packet loss level was tested three times per application. So I, I took three trials, which reduced the number of anomalies which gave it, which gave me. Uh, this data was then compiled into tables and analyzed using graphs, which I'll explore further. Uh, this is a snippet of the uh, data collection process where I <clears throat> had to use a program to actually calculate the PESQ scores. So the first three lines is basically just loading the uh, loading the three files which were recorded on the device. Then um, the, uh, the uh, line 13, 17, and 21 ensure that the sampling rates matched. And then 14, 15, and all of the other lines actually calculated the scores. The last line was calculating the average score, where I added up the three scores and divided it by three. Uh, so delving into the actual data analysis, here I collected the raw data from my experiments, and I measured the mean opinion score, which ranged from one to five. And each table shows the four different conferencing applications with packet loss on the left side, which is the independent variable from zero, five, 10, 20, 30. And on the right side, we can see the three trials and the average score. So from the data, we can uh, see that Zoom consistently maintained a high audio quality while Google Meet's performance dropped significantly and Skype showed a in sharp initial decline while Microsoft Teams displayed a more stable but gradual reduction in quality. But why is this? And to also visualize this uh, better, I graphed it uh, using Excel where we can see all the four uh, conferencing applications on one graph. Uh, so we can see that Microsoft Teams, it started off relatively high at 3.27 when there's no packet loss, but then it decreased to 2.9 at 30% loss. And this indicates that Teams can maintain a stable audio quality with moderate uh, degradation. Zoom, on the other hand, was the best out of the four. It had a consistently high MOS score as compared to the other platforms. It started off at 3.81 and it dropped to only 3.27 at 30% loss. Google Meet uh, showed a more significant decline. It started off low at 2.98, and then rapidly dropped to 1.5 or 4.5, indicating that Google Meet's audio quality is very sensitive. Skype initially performed the best at 4.33, but this was surprising as it had a very steep decline to 1.76 at 30% loss. <coughs> So that's why I wondered what exactly are the reasons for these four applications to differ so significantly in their MOS scores. I found out that this is the factors to do that uh, this is to do with the factors that affect audio quality in the first place. I found that network bandwidth, packet loss, and quality are the aren't the only factors that affect perceived audio quality. There are a lot more other factors like the type of audio co codec the network protocols and the latency buffers each of these softwares use. So what is an audio codec? An audio codec plays a critical role in managing the audio quality by compressing the audiophone transmission and decompressing it upon reception. So you all must have heard about lossy and lossless compressions for pictures. And the same thing applies for audio as well. So lossy codecs, which significantly reduce the file size by removing a lot of less perceivable audio data like Opus, uh, is the lossy uh, type, and there are techniques such as the forward error connection and the redundant, and which sends the redundant data packets, allowing the system to reconstruct lost audio. Whereas PLC, which is packet loss concealment, fills in gaps often less accurately. There's also loss-less compression, which doesn't remove the audio, which doesn't reduce the file size significantly, and doesn't uh, remove as much audio quality. So uh, delving into the application specific techniques, Zoom used Opus codec, which is known for its advanced noise suppression, echo cancellation, and adaptive bitrate, contributing to its superior performance, which is why it was the best out of the four. Microsoft Teams used Silk and Satin codecs uh, with a combination of FEC and PLC. 
uh, but this was not as refined as uh, Zoom. Skype then used Silk with its own um, own iterations to the software, making it a little less effective under poor network conditions. And lastly, Google Meet transitioned to the Lyra codec, optimizing for low bandwidth, but also compromising quality at the same time, which shows how there's a trade-off between quality and uh, low bandwidth conditions. The next factor I uh, researched upon was network protocols, which are the set of rules that govern how data is transmitted across networks. Uh, so for real-time communications, protocols like UDP are preferred because they allow data to be sent without the overhead of establishing a con connection. And TCP, on the other hand, ensures that all data packets are delivered in the correct order, which is reliable but slower. Uh, QUIC, quick which was uh, de developed by Google, is is, is, combines low latency benefits of UDP with some reliability features of TCP, enhancing the performance under variable network conditions. So Zoom used uh, UDP, um, and it had its own propriety techniques like error connection and jitter management that helped it uh, maintain its high audio quality. Microsoft Teams used UDP as well, but optimized it for enterprise environments, making it reliable under complex network setups. Skype, while similar, did not have many optimizations, uh, leading to in inconsistencies in performance. And Google Meet used Quick over UDP, which works well in low bandwidth scenarios, but doesn't always prioritize audio quality like we saw in, even in audio codex. So this shows how a lot of these applications have similar factors which affect its audio quality. Lastly, I also explore latency buffers, which are used to delay audio processing slightly to ensure that data is received correctly and the jitter is smoothed out. A larger buffer can smooth out disruptions effectively, but increase delay, making conversations seem unnatural. Conversely, smaller buffers reduce delay, but may lead to more frequent audio dropouts. And managing this balance is very important for delivering high quality real-time audio especially in varying network conditions. So Zoom specifically excelled in this, in latency buffer management with sophisticated algorithms that dynamically adjusted buffer sizes based on real-time conditions. Microsoft Teams also managed buffers well, but prioritized stability, occasionally leading to higher, slightly higher latency. Skype's buffer management relied on other techniques that may struggle under fluctuating conditions uh, which explains its results. And Google Meet optimized for low bandwidth, low bandwidth environments, sometimes experiencing high latency due to its focus on conserving bandwidth, especially when conditions vary widely, which is when you have 30% packet loss or 40% packet loss. So finally, what's the conclusion? Uh, Zoom consistently delivered the highest audio quality across all levels of packet loss, thanks to its advanced codecs, Error connection, error, error connection techniques and dynamic buffer management, whereas Google Meet struggled the most with significant drops in audio quality due to its reliance on low bitrate codecs and, an and a less effective packet loss management strategy. All in all, these insights not only help us understand the strengths and weaknesses of each platform, but also guide us into making informed decisions about which application to use based on these specific network environments that are analyzed. So this analysis underscores the importance of continuing to innovate and optimize these technologies to ensure a very seamless and effective communication in our increasingly digital world, like what's happening right now. Thank you. And I'll be open to any questions. Thanks, Mili, for sharing us such a wonderful research. Uh, people, if you have queries, questions, anything, you can put in the Q&A section. Mili can take it up now. Amit Singh Best has added that it was a great insight. Thank you. So there is one question from Samksha Sahib. Uh, what motivated you for this research? So there were actually two main things. Uh, first, I discussed how during the COVID-19 times, I actually had to use these uh, conferencing applications myself. And I noticed that some had very clear audio while others didn't. And this really made me curious as to why these had such different um, different experiences. <clears throat> so that, that was about two or three years ago. And recently, since I'm doing IB, uh, in my subject, computer science, I had to actually write a report 
uh, on an experiment I did and I chose to do this and therefore I wrote a 4,000 word essay on this topic as well. Got it. There is, there is another question from anonymous attendee. Can you explain how you tested the audio? So I used a PESQ tool, which is a standardized metric, which stands for perceptual uh, evaluative speech quality, which showed, which actually measured the audio quality of the files after recording it on each device. And it, I wrote a program, which I showed before, which I'll just go to right now here. So the th first three lines actually loaded the recorded uh, files. And then using this tool, I calculated the mean, uh, median opinion score and it compared the original file to the recorded file, which gave me the score from one to five, with five being the best and one being the worst. Got it. So there is one question in the chat as well. I guess it was answered. Which tool did you use to verify packet loss? So packet loss was done using a network link coordinator, where I basically just simulated different levels of packet loss from 0%, 5%, 10%. 30% and 40%. Understood. Uh, there is one more question so from Surendra Nath. So to be clear, you tested and tested the recorded session from various applications, right? Yeah, from the four applications. So Naveen has one question. Can we use this tool for testing audio quality indirectly from a call? Uh, I don't think we can use it directly. I think we'll need two laptops like I had in this uh, I had in this experiment, and you need to write like a program which records the files and then tests it. So I don't think you can directly do it using just one device. Understood. So there is one another question: Was APM used anywhere? Uh, in this specific experience report, it wasn't. Okay, I guess that, that was it. Uh, thanks, Millie, for sharing your experience with us today. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. Thank you.